In this video, we're going to tackle the following questions. We're going to define whooping cough. We're going to mention the causative organism or agent. Describe the pathophysiology of petasis. State five signs and symptoms of petasis. Discuss the management of whooping cough. And state five complications of petasis. Let's get started. So, whooping cough is defined as an acute infectious disease of the respiratory tract which is caused by a bacilli called Bondetella petasis and is characterized by paroxysms of cough which end with a whoop sound and is usually accompanied by vomiting. Okay, so mention the causative agent. So the causative agent is a bacilli called Bondetella petasis. Its incubation period is 5 to 21 days with an average of 14 days. It can affect all ages, but 90% of all cases are children below the age of one year. So newborns can get infected soon after birth. Its period of infectiousness is 4 to 6 weeks after the onset of symptoms. So don't forget the causative agent is Bondetella petasis. Okay, now let's describe the pathophysiology of petasis. So, after inhaling infected droplets, the bacteria attach to the ciliated epithelial cells of the respiratory tract and begin to multiply along the lining. This multiplication spreads from the nasopharynx to the alveoli with the most severe effects occurring in the bronchioles. This process leads to inflammation of the mucosa lining, resulting in excessive mucus production, congestion, and infiltration of lymphocytes into the mucosa. These changes narrow the bronchioles, causing atelectasis and emphysema in areas with partial obstruction. Inflammation in the bronchioles weakens their walls, eventually leading to bronchiectasis at a later stage. The organism also secretes an endotoxin at the site of multiplication, which is believed to trigger the characteristic paroxysmal cough. So this is the, the pathophysiology of ketosis or whooping cough. So the next question says, state five signs and symptoms of petasis or whooping cough. So I'm going to give you more than five. So the signs and symptoms of whooping cough progress through three stages, cataro, paroxysmal, and convalescent. In the cataro stage, which lasts about one week, the disease is highly infectious. The child typically has mild symptoms, including a low-grade fever, runny nose, conjunctivitis, and a progressively worsening non-productive cough. The paroxysmal stage lasts two to four weeks and is marked by unmistakable symptoms. The child experiences severe bouts of coughing, especially at night, with each episode ending in a distinctive whoop sound caused by spasms of the glottis. During coughing fits, the child may protrude their tongue, drew, and even turn blue, which is cyanosis, due to lack of oxygen. Pressure from coughing can distend the jugular vein and there may be tearing from the eyes. In the convalescent stage, the child gradually improves. The cough becomes less intense, although the characteristic whoop sound may persist for four to eight weeks. Let's now discuss the management of whooping cough. So we're going to start with medical management. So under investigations, first of all, a provisional diagnosis is often based on clinical features, such as the presence of a characteristic whoop sound. Then a confirmatory diagnosis can be made through sputum analysis for microscopy, culture, and sensitivity to identify the causative agent. 
A chest X-ray may be performed to rule out other respiratory infections. Then lastly, full blood count may show lymphocytosis. The treatment plan includes administering antibiotics like Xpen with doses ranging from a quarter to one mega unit based on the child's age, given four times daily for five days. For pain and fever management, analgesics and antipyretics such as paracetamol, which is given 50 to 200 milligrams, are recommended three times daily over three days. To reduce respiratory spasms, a single dose of probanthine, 2.5 milligrams, may be given. Steam inhalation is advised to soothe the throat and oxygen therapy at 2 to 3 liters per minute can be used to relieve cyanosis. Okay, let's now focus on nursing care, which is part of the management. So, the primary objectives of nursing care are to facilitate rapid recovery, relieve hypoxia, alleviate anxiety, and prevent complications. By focusing on these key goals, nursing interventions aim to support the patient's overall well-being and enhance the healing process. Ensuring adequate oxygenation helps to address hypoxia, while providing emotional support and reassurance can help reduce anxiety. Additionally, by monitoring the patient closely and implementing uh, preventive measures, nurses play a crucial role in avoiding potential complications, ensuring a smoother um, recovery for the patient. Okay, now that we've created the objectives, the next thing that we need to look at is the environment where we're going to admit our patient so never write this information in point form it should be in paragraph form because as you are writing this this is an essay okay so the management of whooping cough involves ensuring a controlled environment to support recovery and prevent complications the patient will be isolated to reduce the risk of spreading the infection to others to minimize the risk of additional respiratory tract infections, the patient will be placed in a well-ventilated room. A well-lit environment is also essential for continuous monitoring and to help the patient stay oriented to time and place. Moreover, maintaining a clean room is crucial in preventing the occurrence of nasocomial infections and ensuring the overall safety and well-being of the patient. So, as you are managing the patient, the patient should be positioned in a way that ensures comfort. With Fowler's position recommended for those old enough to help promote lung expansion. To prevent pressure sores, the patient's position will be changed every two hours. As the condition improves, the patient will be encouraged to adopt any position that provides comfort, allowing for better rest and recovery. This approach helps manage the physical discomforts associated with the illness while supporting respiratory function and overall well-being. So, as you're managing the patient, ensure that the patient receives adequate rest. To support this, the patient will be placed in a quiet room, minimizing external noise and disturbances. The radio will be played at a low volume to maintain a calming atmosphere. Phone calls will be answered promptly to avoid disruptions and any necessary procedures will be carried out in blocks to reduce interruptions during rest period. Prescribed analgesics will be administered as needed to ensure comfort, while squeaking trolleys will be oiled to prevent unnecessary noise. All these measures work together to promote rest and recovery for the patient. The management of whooping cough also involves careful observation of several key parameters. Vital signs, blood pressure and weight will be monitored to establish baseline data, 
which helps in assessing whether the condition is improving or becoming worse. Cyanosis will be observed closely with oxygen therapy provided when necessary to ensure proper oxygenation. In cases of dyspnea, the patient will be positioned to promote lung expansion and ease breathing difficulties. Regular checks of pressure areas will be performed to detect any early signs of pressure sores. Additionally, the progression of the cough will be monitored to determine whether it is improving or worsening, ensuring that appropriate interventions are implemented as needed. In managing whooping cough, psychological care is crucial for both the patient and their family. The disease process will be clearly explained to the mother to enhance her understanding and help reduce any anxiety. The mother will be encouraged to ask questions and any concerns will be addressed directly with referrals made to the physician for questions that cannot be answered. Additionally, all procedures will be explained to both the patient and the mother to further alleviate any fears. To provide additional support, a successfully managed case will be invited to speak with the mother, offering her the opportunity to ask questions and gain reassurance, ultimately improving the patient's outlook. On the condition. Apart from psychological care, also focus on hygiene to ensure comfort and prevent further complications. Bathing the child helps remove dead epithelium and promote overall comfort. Hair care is provided to boost self esteem and prevent pediculosis. While nail care is essential to avoid auto infection. Mouth care is carried out to prevent halitosis and any soiled linen and clothing are promptly changed to maintain comfort and hygiene. These measures are crucial in supporting the child's recovery and well-being during their illness. The management of whooping cough also includes addressing elimination needs to support overall health. Ensuring an adequate intake of fluids and roughage is essential to prevent constipation. Additionally, administering copious fluids promotes renal washout, helping to prevent potential renal complications. Regularly changing the baby's nappies also plays a vital role in encouraging bowel movement and further preventing constipation contributing to the child's comfort and well-being during the course of the illness. Nutrition plays a vital role in supporting recovery. If the patient is still breastfeeding, it is important to encourage the mother to continue breastfeeding as it helps maintain the patient's nutritional status. Energy-giving foods such as enshima should be provided to meet the energy demands required for metabolic processes. Additionally, protein-rich foods like fish are essential to promote the repair and replacement of worn-out tissues. To support the immune system and maintain the integrity of the skin and mucous membranes, vegetables and fruits should also be included in the diet. This balanced approach ensures that the patient receives the necessary nutrients for healing and overall health. Several key interventions to support recovery and prevent complications are involved. If the patient is confined to bed, passive exercises such as limb movements and massage will be implemented to prevent muscle atrophy and promote blood circulation. Additionally, deep breathing exercises will be encouraged to help expand the lungs and improve respiratory function. As the patient's condition improves, early ambulation will be encouraged to prevent complications like deep vein thrombosis and the negative effects of prolonged immobility. These measures are crucial in supporting the overall recovery and minimizing risks associated with extended bed rest. 
The management of whooping cough also involves careful administration of medications to aid recovery and provide relief from symptoms. Prescribed analgesics such as paracetamol should be administered at the appropriate times to help alleviate discomfort and promote rest. Antibiotics like x pain are also given as prescribed to accelerate the healing process. It is essential to supervise the administration of these medications, ensuring they are taken in the caregiver's presence to maximize their effectiveness and support a swift recovery. And the last part of the management that we can discuss is information, education, and communication. So management of whooping cough involves comprehensive education for both the patient and caregiver. It is important to educate the patient's mother about the child's condition to increase awareness and prevent recurrence. Emphasizing the importance of medication adherence promotes compliance and enhances treatment effectiveness. Additionally, informing the patient about the signs and symptoms of whooping cough can help in early diagnosis and treatment, reducing the risk of complications. Guidance on maintaining a balanced diet using locally available foods supports immune health while keeping regular review dates ensures progress monitoring and full recovery. Further preventive measures include advising on staying warm to prevent against respiratory infection. Regular attendance at the under 5 clinic is also crucial for tracking the child's growth and receiving vaccinations, thereby preventing pertussis and ensuring overall well-being. Let's look at the last question, which reads, State five complications of pertussis. So, whooping cough can lead to several complications due to the intense prolonged nature of its coughing fits. One such complication is the development of hernia caused by the increased intra-abdominal pressure from forceful coughing. The strain from these episodes can also lead to cerebral hypoxia, a reduced oxygen supply to the brain, which may result in convulsions. Additionally, the infection can spread to the lungs causing bronchopneumonia, a serious condition requiring prompt medical attention. Fragile blood vessels in the eyes can rupture from the force of coughing, resulting in conjunctival hemorrhage. Similarly, the strain may also cause rectal prolapse and in some cases epistaxis or nosebleed due to ruptured nasal blood vessels. Each of these complications demonstrates the potential severity of whooping cough and the importance of early intervention and supportive care. 